This is the follow-up of the frog jumping puzzle. Here, where there was two frogs, and the setup here is it's going to be a circle of n lily pads, and both frogs were move freely with certain jump probabilities. We want to find out the long-term stationary distribution of the frog's position. They move independently, and they move with fixed jump probabilities. For a simpler version of the problem, where there is only one frog jumping on a circle of n lily pads, we have a video to justify that eventually the stationary distribution with the uniform probability that uh, each particular position is 1 over n. Do check out the previous video for the detailed explanation why we can use symmetry argument to reach the conclusion. Today, we're going to look at the setup with two frogs with some parameters, like frog A would jump to the right with probability p equal 0.5, or stay put with probability 1 minus p at each time epoch, right? For example, every one minute, they would make the move with this given probability. For the second frog, it will jump to the right with a different probability, 0.6, and we will stay put in the same position for the 1 minus q, which is 0.4. We understand that the problem is another example of Markov chain where the transitional probability is determined by the current state it does not depend on the prior history. So each will make their own decision each time. As in any Markov chain, when you model the problem, you want to define the state of the system and you want to define the transitional probability from state i to state j. Since we have two frogs, we're going to use the position ij. i is the position of frog a. You know, i is any value from 1 to n. Right, j is also 1 through n, so there are total n times n, n square potential states. We're going to define what is the transition probability from one state to the other. So here we have n square states. In general, in Markov chain, once you have different states, and then the pij would represent the probability moving from i to j. Each state can transition to its laboring states based on the movement probability of both frogs. So they can at most jump one step to the right. So which means even though we have n square states, at each given position, there is only limited number of positions you can jump to. So for example, in case of n equals 3, that is the total n square, which is nine different positions, and you're going to have matrix, nine by nine matrix, we actually have these transitional probabilities. All right, so 9 by 9 matrix, each row, the number will add up to 1, representing the total probability that you have to move away from the current position add up to 1. We we'll try to find the stationary distribution. So usually when we describe this, we're going to say the pi, that is the long-term probability of the flux position on the little paths. So in this case, it's going to be a vector of n squared. All right, mathematically, we try to find pi so that pi p equal pi. So this equation means that when we multiply the stationary distribution by the transition matrix, the resulting distribution remains unchanged. Our goal here is to find pi. Now here, again, just like in the first video, we would like to argue that it is symmetrical again. So why does the setup lead to a symmetric behavior despite there's different jump probabilities for frog A versus B? Now there are three reasons. One is that uh, this system has circular symmetry as in the one frog case. So with this circular setup, so there's no positional advantage for any given position from 1 through n. But the second point I want to make is that each frog will make independent movements and over the time both will cover all n lily pads even if at different rate right? because the jump versus stay probability number are different. Now the third point I want to make is that cumulative effect is that uh, when you have different jump probabilities, you want to average out over a longer period of time. And this is again due to the pound's circular nature. 
So with this, we know that there are total nine possible positions. In the long run, the probability that frog A and B appear in any combination is uniform distribution, that is one over nine. So I have a Python program here. We try to define the transition probability using the rules that we just specified. And then this is a code to generate the transitional probabilities. And then we're going to use an iterative method to find a stationary distribution. Instead of solving the equation pi equal pi p, we're going to start with pi zero. And then each time we're going to see if the difference between the current value and the previous value are close enough with some threshold here, right? So this would compare the norm of the new distribution and the old distribution, right? When we run it, the result is 1 over 9, the uniform distribution. The Python results confirms our claim that the result is going to be uniform distribution in this case. In the next video, we're going to look at a similar problem with different setup. Then the problem is no longer symmetric. Hope you enjoyed the video. For more interesting math or computer science problems, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel.